Hey, what's up, guys? Spear Gaming here. Today, we're going to be talking about solo queuing to Fable. Now, of course, with Shadowkeep, we have the solo queue playlist is going to be coming, and so a lot of people are really excited to be able to hop into comp as a solo queue playlist. And so, I'm going to be giving you guys five tips that are definitely going to help you out if you're planning on trying to reach Fabled in Shadowkeep. So, if you guys enjoy this video, if it helps you at all, do me a favor: smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, and let's get into it. Alright, so real quick, I want to give you guys a background. I'm not the best Crucible player in the world. I don't claim to be, uh, but I do know a little bit of what I'm talking about. This past season, I was able to help 29 individuals uh, get different pinnacle weapons from Recluse to Revoker, Luna's Howl, any of those. And if you guys are interested, uh, definitely hop over to twitch.tv slash speargaming. That's where I stream all of the Crucible action, uh, all the recoves, and comp help is going to be on going on this season. Uh, now, I say that because I used to be a pretty much an average uh, Crucible player. I, I really wasn't that great. But through playing comp, I've kind of figured out the system, and i figured out things that you should be doing, things that work, and things that are going to get you um, a lot easier time, uh, especially solo queuing. That's my biggest thing, is I mainly solo queue. Uh, we're going to be doing comp help this season, but with the solo queue playlist, a lot of things are a little bit different compared to when you're playing as a team. So hopefully, uh, these tips are going to help you guys out. And again, if you have any other tips you guys think of, uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section, and let me know which tip uh, that I gave helped you guys out the most. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now these tips are not in any particular order. These are just five things that I think you should definitely keep your mind on uh, when you're loading into comp. Remember, if you're playing comp and you're going for Fabled, uh, you want to make sure you're playing for the win. So it doesn't matter what other people think, doesn't matter what other people say, always keep that in mind, you're playing to win. So the first thing we're going to talk about is loadouts. There's a lot of different things when it comes to loadout, but a good general rule of thumb is try to have a couple different loadouts that work well for you. They don't necessarily have to be meta weapons. You can use off-meta weapons. If you're good with a completely random strange weapon to everyone else, keep using it. But don't just stick on one loadout. Have a couple different ones. For example, I have I tend to use Chaperone and Trust, but I also have Service Revolver and Loaded Question. But I also have a sniping loadout if it happens to be a bigger map like Midtown or Eternity. So you want to always have a couple different options. If you start doing bad in a match, consider switching to your other loadout. It's possible that the enemies are using something that counters your loadout, so if you switch up what you're using, it might counter them. Always have that in mind when you're playing the match because uh, a lot of times people just get stuck on using one thing and that's it, and then you end up losing matches that way. Another really important thing when it comes to your loadout is make sure you're using an exotic armor piece and also make sure you're using scavenger perks. I see so many times when I'm checking people's loadouts when I'm loading into matches and they don't even have exotic armor pieces. You're really putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're not using an exotic armor piece. There's tons of exotics out there and there's meta ones and there's some that are off meta and underrated. For example, I always run Dragon Shadow when I'm a hunter. That is probably my favorite exotic to run in Crucible for several reasons. Try it and you'll understand what I mean. But when you see someone loading in without an exotic armor piece, I instantly point that out. I'll call it out to my teammates if I'm playing, but if you're solo queuing, keep that in mind uh, that you're going to have an advantage on someone because you're running an exotic. If you don't know what exotics to run, just go through the collections and look at them and try to find one that fits your playstyle. There's a bunch of different options out there, just make sure you're using one. When it comes to scavenger perks, you want to make sure you're running double if you can. They are on the arms as well as the class item. So if you're running shotguns, uh, fusions, or snipers, definitely want to load up on scavenger perks. The next tip, and this is a big one, is every single match you play, you want to check what you're up against before the match starts. If you're on console, you have quite a bit of loading time, so definitely go through and check what other people are running. Look at their weapons, look if they're running exotics, look at what subclass they're even running. Any information that you can get by looking, uh, chances are is going to help you out in the long run. If you see that there's a couple people sniping and it ends up being a bigger map, if you're a pretty decent sniper, maybe try to contest them. 
If you can't and you know they're going to be sniping, try to get an aggressive loadout like close quarters and try to push them. A lot of different strategies open up when you start to inspect the enemy team and see what they're running. Loading into the solo queue playlist, everyone's going to be solo playing, so you don't have to worry about four stacks anymore. But you still want to be aware of what exotics they may or may not be running, as well as what loadouts they have. You hard scope too long, a spider shot Another a really good tip when you're solo queuing to Fabled is to know the meta. Now, you don't necessarily have to use the meta, but you have to be aware of it at least, and know that people are going to be using it. If other people are out there playing for the win, which is what I said to keep in mind for all of these tips, then you can't really blame them for trying to win and using the best weapons possible. Meta literally stands for most effective tools available, and if you're not using the most effective tools available, you better have a good reason for it. For example, right now, the hand cannon shotgun meta is very popular, as well as the mountaintop recluse. If you see people running that loadout, you know why. It's very effective. Works all really well. And you can't really blame people for using that just because of the fact that it's the current meta. Now, of course, going into Shadow Keep, the meta is going to change slightly. Seems like pulse rifles are going to be a little bit more potent, yeah, but I you remember, can you can bet for sure shotguns are not going away. So I would say either get good at using shotguns and learn how to use them properly or do what I do and use fusions and counter shotguns because you know everyone's going to be using them. Honestly, if you're not using the meta, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. But like I said before, you don't have to use the meta, but you do need to be aware of it. At least knowing what you're up against is half of the battle. Oh wait, no, it was the season before. It was like at the end. It was Redrick's, Redrick's and uh, Luna's that I got at the same time. Cause I never really stepped foot back in to comp until I was grinding out the Redrick's quest where you have to do the comp matches. And then I just, I kept playing comp and I just, I enjoyed comp and I didn't enjoy quick play. Jeez, dude. I don't know, it's just something about the, it's like more structured maybe, maybe that's what I like about it. Quick play is just so chaotic, dude. There's like no order. So if you have trouble with tilting, general rule of thumb that I give people is if you lose two matches in a row, take a break. Stop playing comp, go do something else, go do some strikes, go do a quest, take a break, and then come back to it later. If you come back to it the same day and you lose two more games, you're done for the day. Just just stop playing comp and continue the next day. Because all, all that's going to happen is you're going to get tilted, you're going to lose more matches, you're not going to have a level head, and then you're going to get mad that you're going down in glory. And that's not what you want. Oh so again, try to not all tilt. It's a lot easier here. said than done. But you want to remember that the I end goal is to hit Fable. You don't have to do it instantly, you don't have to do it right now. It's going to be a bit of a grind for some people, but if you don't tilt, it's going to make it a lot easier, and it definitely is possible for anyone to hit Fable. The final tip I can give you guys when it comes to solo queuing to Fabled is to try to make good decisions. Good decisions in Destiny are not always the easiest choices or not always uh, easy to point out and learn. Some of it will come from experience. Some of it you'll learn from your mistakes. If you do something and it didn't work out, try to analyze what happened and think, how could I have done this differently? That way in the future, when that same situation comes up, you might be able to react a little bit differently and you might be able to come on top with the win. This comes with everything from map awareness uh, to choke points uh, to playing objectives. Of course, with Shadowkeep, we're just going to have uh, survival, but you can still make some pretty dumb decisions if you're not paying attention. For example, if you see that they have six lives left and you're the only one alive, don't waste your super. You're not going to win that fight. Think about it. If, even if you killed all four of them, that's only four lives down. They still have a life advantage. 
So when I say make good decisions, I mean do stuff like that. Learn from your mistakes and learn from your experience as you play on and it's going to make you a better player in the long run and it's definitely going to help you if you're trying to get to Fabled uh, solo. Alright guys, well that is going to wrap it up for this video. That's five tips to help you guys solo queue to Fabled in Shadowkeep. Uh, again, if any of these tips helped you out, please do me a favor, smash that like button. It definitely helps me out on the channel. And if any of these tips helped you out, let me know which one did the most um, down in the comment section. And also, if I left out any tips that helped you, be sure to do drop those in the comment section as well. Because chances are there's someone else that can use that advice from you. So let's stay positive, let's help each other, and hopefully we can help each other get Recluse together. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for all the support on the channels. You guys have been really awesome. And again, if you guys want to catch all of the Crucible action live for Fabled Recoves and Comp Help, head over to twitch.tv slash speargaming and drop me a follow. And that way you can get notifications whenever we go live because we're going to continue more Comp Help and Recoves throughout this season and Shadow Peep. So thank you so much again for all the support. You guys have been awesome and I really do appreciate it. Alright, force. Four Street. Alright, we're going for the final.